More than 200 senior defence officials, members of Australia's submarine industry and international strategic partners gathered in Fremantle in November 2014 to attend the Submarine Institute of Australia's 7th Biennial Conference. In the centenary year of Australia's submarine force, the conference included presentations charting the historic journey of this most important strategic asset and highlighted the vital role submarines continue to play in the nation's defence. It was also an opportunity to network and to catch up with friends and colleagues with lively discussion firmly focused on Australia's future submarine capability. The conference kicked off with a welcome by outgoing SIA President Peter Horobin, followed by a number of notable presentations by leading industry figures. Peter's comments set the tone for the opening session. He emphasised the value of the submarine community's knowledge and experience and the critical need to begin the process for securing Australia's future submarine fleet without delay. The Future Submarine Program is a 100-year program. The foundations that are laid with this project will sustain the sovereign Australian submarine capability through to the 22nd century. The day one plenary session included speeches by the Honourable Joe Francis, Western Australia's Minister for Veterans, former Federal Minister for Defence, Senator the Honourable David Johnston, Vice Admiral Tim Barrett, Chief of the Royal Australian Navy, and Dr Andrew Davies, Senior Analyst at the Australian Strategic Policy Institute. Minister Francis, a former submariner, welcomed delegates to Western Australia. He told the conference it made sense for all maintenance of future submarines to be carried out at the Australian Marine Complex south of Fremantle, where major servicing of the Collins fleet is now conducted. We are exceptionally committed to do everything we can to make uh, the Navy's home here in the West uh, as comfortable as possible to ensure that we uh, not only uh, attract and train and maintain uh, the, the best qualified um, people within the Royal Australian Navy, but also um, for those in the, uh, in the civilian side of looking after uh, our, our most important strategic asset. Former Federal Minister for Defence, Senator David Johnston, underlined the vital strategic role of submarines in protecting the nation's key maritime trade routes. He stressed the government's commitment to the future submarine program. The next submarine will have longer range endurance than any diesel electric submarine currently available off the shelf. We must act soon if we are to avoid a capability and national security gap as I have sought to emphasise this morning. Chief of Navy Vice Admiral Tim Barrett said the build location of Australia's future submarine was irrelevant to him as the head of Australia's submarine force. More important was the need for Australia to own the intellectual property surrounding the design and the capability to sustain the fleet throughout life. What we need to have is a complete knowledge, a complete knowledge of the submarine we operate, a complete understanding of the design, a complete understanding of the design intent, a complete understanding of every aspect, every aspect of the boat, its system and all their attributes. But dare I say, none of this dictates the build location. The plenary session's most thought-provoking presentation was left to Dr Andrew Davies. Dr Davies made an insightful attempt at crystal ball gazing, exploring the strategic environment in which Australia would be operating during the next 40 years and how this might impact our decisions today. If you look at Southeast Asia, one of the things we can reasonably extrapolate now is that there'll be a proliferation of increasingly capable weapon systems certainly including cruise missiles, possibly including ballistic uh, anti-shipping missiles in the future, fifth generation aircraft, etc, etc. And the net result of that is that there's going to be around most countries, certainly around most countries with the wherewithal to purchase that equipment and over time learn to use it effectively, there will be what I call bubbles of exclusion anti-access or area denial regions where surface vessels in particular will find life very difficult. Everywhere we look in the future, spaces will be increasingly contested, particularly on the surface. We probably need to stay near the cutting edge of technology, but probably not at the cutting edge of technology because, simply put, that's too expensive. That's one place where it does make sense to free ride on the economies of scale of the United States. And if we do things right, we can insert our good ideas 
and our uh, our cutting edge technology into a sort of cooperative development process. Over the next few months there is industry expectation that a more inclusive approach to defining Australia's future submarine capability will take place and that a competitive tender is the most sensible commercial action. We are all anticipating the 2015 Defence White Paper will include at least some answers to the most pressing questions raised at the conference. The Submarine Institute of Australia would like to thank delegates and presenters for making this important centenary of submarines event such a success. We would also like to thank all our valued sponsors for their ongoing support. With your help, the Submarine Institute is committed to ensuring Australia's submarine force is sustainable for the next 100 years.